Hello YouTube, this is a Lee Chess Classical Analysis game that I played on Lee Chess and it was a uh, 20 minute uh, game with a 20 second increment. Um, I was rated 2207 in the classical rating and uh, my opponent was rated 2265. So let's get right into it. Um, so yeah, I played a Sicilian defense. Uh, so they played the uh, Smith Moore Gambit. So here I played knight c6, d6, and a6. Now this is a system against the Smith Moore that uh, really beats a lot of old Smith Moore players that don't keep up with theory. Basically, what you're going to do is play knight f6, uh, pin the knight right here, and then uh, if white ever plays like h3 to question your bishop, you'll trade on f3. And you'll play e6, bishop e7. The queen will usually come to b8. And you'll get castled and, uh, you know, you'll be up a, a solid pawn. Um, it's, of course, not that simple. You can't guarantee an advantage, but uh, it's what I play for black. So a6 is important because in a lot of lines, uh, the b5 square can become pretty weak after the center's open with like e5 or something. So uh, knight f6. And uh, he played bishop f4. Now there is a variation here where they play e5. Uh, you take the pawn and then they uh, trade queens. Play back with a knight. This variation is actually good for black but you have to be pretty careful because white does have some activity with his pieces. But basically what you do is you play e6 and bishop d6 and push the pieces back. Maybe you'll play b5 at some point, bishop b7, that kind of thing. So, instead of that, uh, he played bishop f4, which is actually a decent line. Although it only leads to equality. Um, I played bishop g4. He played h3. So I took his knight, her knight. Not sure what gender there. Okay, so I played e6. And now my plan is basically just to play queen b8, bishop b7, castle, and then get the rook behind the d-pawn, rook d8. And then basically you can think of things like b5, knight a5, knight e5, rook c8, queen b7. And basically you just uh, keep a solid position. Uh, so they played rook d1 and I played queen b8. And b8 is better than c7, because on c7, after rook c1, you can run into some knight d5 sacrifice ideas. Uh, so it's a lot safer to put the queen on b8 than on c7. So queen b8, uh, and then he started, or she started doubling rooks. Um, now I know there is a line where you play uh, bishop b2. Bishop b7, and then you can play bishop, queen g3, so bishop, the point of bishop b2, which looks like it actually retreats the bishop, is to stop knight h5 here. So if this bishop weren't on a, uh, e2, then knight h5 would actually fork the queen and bishop. So after this, um, <clears throat> there's some tactics that can arise here. Um, I think rook takes d6 is a move. And if you take the rook, you get forked right again. Uh, this is what I expected to happen in the game, actually, because this is a pretty common variation, but uh, it's dead equal. So, rook d1, queen b8, and then they doubled rooks. So their idea is just to double rooks and then win back this d6 pawn. <clears throat> In which case, white has regained equality, so I played bishop b7. Uh, they doubled rooks. And I thought about actually castling here, allowing uh, this. <coughs> and I thought uh, maybe I have like knight d5 here, attacking this rook and blocking, you know, something like that. But I wasn't sure uh, after knight d5 if they had something like rook d7. In which case I'm not winning the rook I guess. 
you know, I wasn't really sure what was happening. Maybe Knight d6 here would actually win, but I wasn't sure about this, so I didn't go in for this. Uh, instead, I played Knight e5, which deals with the threat on d6. Now I'm blocking the bishop, and if if they capture on e5, uh, I can capture back with a pawn, and I don't lose a pawn. Also, this pawn on e5 is actually really nice. These doubled pawns cover a lot of central squares, so. Uh, they took, I recaptured, and they played g4. So they're basically just trying to destabilize my knight, maybe invade on d7 after my knight leaves d7. So I thought about h6, but then I was thinking, okay, they'll play h4, and then I'll have to play g5 uh, to stop, stop the pawn from advancing to g5. So I decided I might as well just play g5 myself. And if they play h4, I'll play h6. And it's actually difficult. Like, let's say they played h4, h6, pawn takes, pawn takes. Now the h file is opened. But also, if they try to attack this g5 pawn, I can capture on g4 and get a very good game. So it's kind of difficult to exploit the fact that this g5 pawn could be weak. So I played uh, g5, and they played queen e3. And I played queen c7 first. I was still planning to play h6, but I wanted to get my queen on c7 to cover b6. So for instance, if I were to play h6 and they play queen b6, this is what I would want to avoid. So I played queen c7 first, gaining a tempo on the bishop. They played bishop b3, and then I played h6. And I was feeling pretty positive about this position. You know, I can try to play bishop c5, I can play rook d8 and trade rooks. Uh, eventually castle or something like that. Um, they played rook c2. And now, I really don't have a lot of squares for my queen. Uh, so I only considered a couple moves. Queen b8, which looks passive and really only comes back to a7, which isn't very good. So I decided queen a5 was the only move, so I played this move pretty quickly. Uh, on the clock I have 15 minutes and they had 10 minutes. Um, they played knight a4, and I think I castled, yeah I castled here, and so I was expecting knight b6 which they played, and then I played rook d8, so really wasn't a lot of choice there, um, but then they captured on d8, and here's where I went into a think. Um, so I thought for about seven, eight. I thought for about five minutes in this move. I considered bishop takes d8, and my idea is basically just I mean, he's going to play knight c4. They're going to play knight c4, and I didn't really see a follow for black here. You know, I'd love to get bishop b6 or something, but my queen's under attack. I considered queen c7. You know, I'm, I'm in a discovery, but the knight can't really move anywhere. I guess even knight b6 I can take it, so. So this might have been playable, but uh, I went into a long calculation, and, and basically what I was thinking about was after a rook takes d8, and they play rook c7, I started noticing that there's this forcing line that's coming up. If I play bishop d6, they take on b7. Now I play bishop c5, so I'm basically winning a piece here, and the only reason I'm not winning a piece is they play queen f3. So now if I were to, for instance, take this knight, they take on f3, and they've got a lot of play against my king here. But I noticed that uh, in this variation, which we went into in the game, um, I started calculating you know, forced captures, checks, and stuff. And I noticed I could play queen e1 here, which gains me a tempo uh, and attacks f2 an extra time. And so after king g2, now I can play rook d2. And now there's nothing to stop me from playing rook f2. And even if they take on f6, I can play rook f2. And I'm winning this queen back. So, you know, if they were to capture here, they get mated in one move, so. So basically, this is what happened in the game, and that was it. Uh, after rook d2, my opponent resigned. So 
that's what I was thinking of during the game. And if you enjoyed this analysis, please subscribe and have a good one.